We like to have fun. There yeah. we are. Yay. Hello, everyone in uh, Purse Strings Facebook land, also on LinkedIn. Are we on Insta yet, huh? No? Uh, no, not right now. We're just in our 50 plus and fabulous groups. Okay, two of them. And on um, LinkedIn. So welcome. We are Purse Strings. We come to you every Thursday at the same time. So and it's Monday, but that's okay. Oh, sorry. Every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> just getting started here in this week i know sorry it's monday i thought the week was already over i've been i've been up a while so <laughs> a long day already so anyway we are here in our 50 plus and fabulous groups and 50 a life redesign but now it's 50 and now it's your time isn't that what uh, julie named it i think so yeah so we have a new group uh, leader on this one, Julie. So anyway, so glad to be in this group um, because Purse Strings provides free financial um, information, tools, resources, so that all women have a destination location they can go to to get their questions answered. Um, no product sales are going to be pushed. Um, no one's going to tell you to write a check. We're just here to give you the tools, the resources, the knowledge, and moreover, a beautiful list of financial professionals. Katie is one of our financial professionals who are going to answer your questions, who, is going to, who are going to always share uh, their wisdom, their information, their knowledge, their expertise on a financial topic. And this is because we want women to consistently learn and understand how important it is to really take charge of your power, we say, take charge of your financial independence. And so that's why we bring these free online tools to you. And then um, if any of you do have questions or concerns, you're buying a house, need an attorney, um, want to make some investments, you can reach out to these professionals like Katie who are here to serve a female market. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Maggie and to Katie um, to share with you what our topic is for today and to do, introduce Katie, one of our Purse Strings approved professionals here at Purse Strings. Awesome. Well, thank you for that intro, Dr. Barb. Um, my name is Maggie Nielsen. I'm a partner at Purse Strings and uh, excited to be hosting today. Um, we are here with Katie, uh, which I'm so excited about. So before we get started, um, Katie, would you give a little introduction of um, who you are and what you do? Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. I've been so excited about this all weekend. Um, <laughs> who is Katie? Well, Katie is a uh, financial coach and author and an investment advisor. So um, I have been in the human services realm for 20 years, working with people on personal finance and um, really discovered something very profound for myself uh, when I discovered that kind of planning, the financial planning industry, which is, you know, I, I can help people dig out of financial holes but I would also like to be able to help people leap over those holes. So in human services, I was, gosh, helping people left and right to just avoid bankruptcy and so on and so forth. And, and now I'm, I'm in the world of, of helping to, to leap over those holes, Maggie. Well, we're so excited to have you here and get some tips and tricks of how to uh, leap over those holes because none of us really want to fall into them. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of want to highlight that Katie is coming out with a book. Um, it's in compliance right now, but she is, is this your first book that's being published? It is my first book. It's yes. never too late, ladies. It's never too late. I love that. I love that. And so, you know, today we kind of want to talk about some of those main points in your book, um, security, purpose, and peace of mind in the fourth quarter of life. Um, so when we first, you know, started talking about this presentation and what we're going to talk about, you would, you first mentioned, yeah, there are a lot of financial holes people fall in, but you found that people, you know, get in the hole, come out of the hole, get back in another hole. I would love for you to just kind of expand on like what this kind of looks like and why do you think this pattern keeps happening? Well, um, I think it happens due to our lack of education about money. And that's not just re in regards to women, that's in regards to uh, everyone, including our children, by the way. So we still have an opportunity to correct that in all realms. Um, and Purse Strings is doing a great job of contributing to that. So education uh, about finance is, is just 
the biggest piece. It's one of the reasons that I joined the firm that I did, because that is first and foremost in our mission. Um, another reason is that women in particular uh, end up being the caretakers a lot of times for, uh, of course, the, the little ones that we bring into the world, but also um, a lot of times for our spouses, for our siblings, for our parents, even grandparents. Uh, and that can take us away from what might have been an otherwise different work course trajectory. Um, mm -hmm. It can impact our income. It can uh, impact you know, where we kind of end up in life too in the fourth quarter, just based on, you know, we, we end up earning less. And so we have less to put into retirement or we have less time uh, where an employer is matching us and so forth. Um, so we actually end up statistically with less money uh, than men do when it comes to retirement age. You know, some of the other things that can really have us fall into those financial holes if we're not prepared is, um, you know, divorce. Mm -hmm. Divorce is a, a big one that we we don't prepare for. You know, we, we, we don't think it's going to happen. Um, we, we all go into marriage with our whole heart, right? And then life changes and it can change very quickly. And because we're women and we typically outlive uh, our spouses, then we have a longer retirement to fund and we often end up being widows um, more frequently than, than men end up um, losing us first. So all of those are circumstances, Maggie, that you know, can happen to us, um, but we can also be prepared. Definitely. I mean, you, you listed so many reasons there why women end up behind. Um, and it's so difficult because we do end up taking, you know, how do you not take care of everybody else? And, you know, because somebody has to do it. And especially when you're saying, you know, we'll outlive our spouse. So we, women typically live much longer. Um, those, those are expensive years. You know, if you're up in your nineties, you know, you're, they can be very high in long-term care, um, depending on your ability or just, you know, having someone check in on you. It's not like it's, uh, you know, you're in your twenties or thirties, you know, you got a lot going on. And so it's not only is it, um, you live longer, but those are expensive years and you don't really have a caretaker, um, unless that falls on your kids. So you have to plan for that as well. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so there are, you know, clearly many holes to step into. Um, it's like Groundhog's Day out there. Um, <laughs> right. So how do we kind of protect ourselves against these holes? Um, as much as we, you know, as much as we can? Yeah, great question. So I think the biggest way that we can prepare ourselves um, for those holes is to get educated, is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to consume as much general information as we can about finance, as much as our minds and our schedules will let us take in. But I think the best way to get educated and what was true for me in my life was to sit down with a professional and to walk through your own numbers and to get that education while you're walking through those numbers. So we don't just want the education on the one side where we're reading books and then our numbers on the other side. We need to bring the two worlds together so that we can make all those concepts stick. And somehow that <laughs> happens when we're dealing with our own future, right? Um, and there, there are some other things that we can do, but that, that is first and foremost. And we shouldn't have fear about, you know, sitting down with a professional. There's what I love about my, my, my business is that every time I sit down with someone, it's different. And mm -hmm. I thrive on that. If it were rubber stamp, everybody was the same. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I love to get to know the individual, have them know me, and, and then we get educated together and come up with a plan for them. Um, but I think there are a couple of other things that, that we can really do. Um, you know, one is to have plan B. So it's nice mm -hmm. to have the plan, right? But then it's great to have a plan B in, just in case divorce happens, just in case we lose our job, just in case we become widows, uh, unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And um, those are really important things for us emotionally as well. So we, we really need to be able to see, you know, what happens with plan B? Where does that leave me? What are my resources? Who are my resources? Um, and and how's, how would that play out? 
And we, we never right. get to know all the details, but we get to know uh, at least that we've got um, a pathway to walk down. And there are a lot of good um, books and, you know, planners and, and so forth out there that can help us with that. But, you know, go, knowing those basic concepts about debt and about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just allocating money uh, is are really important. How does compound interest work? Why would I invest money? You know, just knowing those things and seeing it applied to ourselves is super important as a base. I, I love that. And the part I always really like to highlight is, um, you know, as much as you have this education, nobody's cookie cutter. Um, that's what makes your job so interesting every day, but that's what also brings, you know, internet knowledge to a limit. And we know that, and that's why we have these professionals is because we're all unique, you know, as much as it might seem like you're just the regular person with a job and a 401k, like it's still, there's always a unique twist on everything, um, which makes your job, like I said, interesting, but also, you know, makes you need that professional because you can't, get your perfect situation on Google because no one else there has it like you do. Um, right. yeah. But then the other thing is, yeah, have a plan B. You can't put all your eggs in one basket as my, as my father always told me, you know? <laughs> and so, and even if it's uh, if you never use it or you never need your plan B to me, it sounds like then there's an extra pot of mon money sitting there, which is um, never, never bad either. And even just that sense of security, Mm -hmm. you know, that is one of the pieces of security that I talk about in the book is just being able to see where these paths might lead should we have to go down them. Um, but, you know, an, another part of security is just kind of knowing ourselves and mm -hmm. having someone else work with us who knows who we are um, and, and what, you know, would give our, what would give our life and our money meaning. Um, and I know you, uh, when we were kind of talking about this presentation, you mentioned, you mentioned how it's important for us to figure out who we are, what we want, you know, what does this meaning money has, um, which I think, you know, after doing enough of these presentations, I've learned that this fourth quarter of life is it is really finding yourself again, you know, if you're a widow or if your kids left the house, you know, and so you're just on this different chapter. Um, I know, you know, this is a big question, but like, what advice do you have around that or, um, you know, to give money meaning and to really find yourself to have that happen? Um, yeah. I know it's a big question. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for asking the big question because that's the one that doesn't get asked, unfortunately. And so, you know, even, even when we're younger, um, we tend to just, you know, use money as a tool. We hear that all mm -hmm. the time. Money is just a tool, but we can really give it meaning and make it feel like uh, it's doing the best work for us. You know, so even when we're younger, we want to kind of put money and how we use it through a filter of, you know, even so much as going back through our bank accounts with our spending and going, was that really meaningful to me? You know, was that maybe you had coffee with someone um, and, you know, it wasn't about going out and getting a cup of coffee. It was about spending quality of time with that person. Right. And that's what really makes that what can be $15 cup of coffee <laughs> these days <laughs> worth it, you mm -hmm. know? You know, I think when people come to see planners and work with professionals, they say, well, they're gonna, they're gonna limit what I spend. They're gonna, they're gonna cut me off. They're gonna kind of hold, hold me back a little bit, you know? Um, but what I'm interested in is, is making sure that money has meaning to that individual. And if, if that's $15 coffee, with the right person, then that's what we need to work in. As we get older, um, Maggie, you know, what, what I have experienced is that we play so many roles during our lives that we think that's who we are. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the fourth quarter, we have an, an opportunity, the opportunity, one more opportunity to really discover who we are and so your question is really, you know, how do we do that? You know, how do we, how do we then align money with who we are? And um, I mean, I can give you a couple of examples, but it really takes a bit of an archaeological dig uh, within ourselves. And sometimes our, just sitting with, with friends that we've known all our lives or siblings, they know who we are, mm -hmm. under our roles, sometimes better than we do. And just having that on, honest conversation with them can take us a long way. Um, but also, 
you know, kind of really looking at what are my unsung dreams? What are those things that I, I just pushed down, pushed away when I started going to work and raising kids and mm -hmm. taking care of parents and all? What are those things? Let's not let them go because it doesn't always take a million dollars to make those things happen. In fact, it's surprising the, you know, I give a lot of resources so is the last chapter in my book in just how we can travel the world, you know, teaching English as a second language, for instance. Right. But I think giving money meaning, um, you know, I can give you a, a great example. One is my sister. And um, my sister is 65 and she's a competitive ballroom dancer. Wow. On top of owning her own business. So she, she's, she's just, doing it she's she's on it and I'll tell you what you know anyone out there who does ballroom dancing at at somewhere near that level you know you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a dress right, I'm and then sure. there's the travel and then there's the this and the that and you know my sister is is smart with her money but you know she doesn't let it go easily but she has no question about buying those dresses or jumping on those airplanes to get to the competitions or her lessons or whatever it is. That is a dream that I know that she has had for decades. And she was married for a number of years to a fellow who didn't dance. And when mm -hmm. he passed away, the door flew open and she just flew through it. She's so put on her dancing shoes. She put them on and probably has about 20 pair of dancing shoes. But, you know, that's another story. Um, and then, you know, writing the book for me was something that I knew in the fifth grade that I was a writer. But then work happened and mm -hmm. all life, ha you know. But uh, I was working with, with someone and uh, I, it just kind of came out that I'm, I'm a writer. That's who mm -hmm. I am. That's that's part of who I am that's been there a long time that is unsung. So writing this book is really a, a not even a labor, just a, a gift that was given to me that I get to express, that I've put a lot of time into, and time has to have meaning just like money. Uh, there's so many wonderful things in there. Um, just the fact that like you never even gave up on that dream, you know, and even if it didn't work then it was like, well, I'm, I'll never be an author, you know, you're like, okay, I'll do it now. I'll do it later. Um, just, you know, and it's interesting. Some titles that we carry, you know, is daughter, wife, caretaker, how, you know, those titles come in and out, you know, and you might've given up caretaker or wife and now you're an author, you know, and you take on these different identities, which is, um, exciting, I think invigorating. It can be scary, of course. Um, but if you don't know where your financial plan is, you can't always hit these goals because you think it's just a million dollars where I'm sure if you sat down with your sister, she figured out how to make her, her joy and almost like her bucket list activities happen. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, and so you know, what, how do you help people in this process or what's your position um, to help the women, anyone reach their goals and live in this peace and uh, joy? Um, I hope you can still see me, Maggie. Yep. I lost you for a second there. Thank you. So how do we help? Well, first of all, we want to dismiss the myth that everybody has to have a million dollars because most people don't. And as I said, you know, um, it, it's just a, it's a generalization that can kind of scare the bejabbers out of us to think that if we don't have a million dollars or 500,000 or, you know, 80% um, of our current income when we retire, that we're just going to have a hard time and we're going to have to sit and watch TV for the rest of our life, <laughs> you know. Um, and we, we can default to that if we don't really look and see who we are and how we want to build the most worthwhile fourth quarter. Um, and again, it's really just about uh, having someone be such a powerful listener for you that they know what those unsung dreams are, that they know what service maybe you want to bring to the fourth quarter. You know, I've, I've grown very fond of, uh, of older dogs as I've gotten older, and I'm going to start fostering um, 
older abandoned dogs. You know, just um, yeah, that, that are just so so deep in our hearts, and you know, there are ways to have them not cost a lot of money, but super important, Maggie, to just customize that plan to those dreams and pull in all the plan Bs that could happen um, so that we can can really see with confidence that we're going to be okay. We're going to have mm -hmm. that security and we're going to play out that purpose. We're going to have that peace of mind, you know, despite what Google is telling us we need, you know. <laughs> And that's priceless. I mean, that peace of mind, that sense to relax and to know that, you know, there will be a continuous roof over my head is very relieving. Like just going and knowing that is like, okay, it'll be, it'll be okay. Oh, it's huge. I was just talking with a woman the other day who she'd worked with a number of, of uh, financial folks and um, not to be too crude, but she said to me, they all told me I was screwed. Mm -hmm. And we just dug deep and really took a look at where she was now, what resources she had, what she really wanted Q4 to look like. And it turns out that her family has been taking care of their parents, you know, in layers for generations. And her daughter's already set up to, you know, take care of her if need be and fill in that gap so that her mom mm -hmm. can have the best life possible. But she wasn't acknowledging that. And, um, you know, to, to say that that's a resource is really important and not mm -hmm. overlook it and think that money has to be there uh, in the millions instead is critical. I, I definitely agree. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with having somebody else take care of you. You've been taking care of people your whole life, as long as that's been discussed um, at some point. Exactly. Um, yeah. But, you and know, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of it where, you know, if it was your kid at this age, you know, what would you what would you tell them? You know, we're always nicer to anyone else, I think, except for ourselves sometimes. And so it's like, what would you tell your kid? You would want them to go live it up, you know, um, whatever that may whatever that dream is. That's right. That's right. And, you know, speaking of kids, you know, I think there are a lot of things that um, that folks can do now. So, you know, my book is called Q4 Woman, and that is really pointing to the fourth quarter of life. But there's a lot of information in there about what we can do to, you know, safeguard what we do have financially and to start keeping track of those dreams that sometimes get layers put on top of them. And one of the things that, that we can do Maggie is, you know, if we do step out of the workforce to say have kids uh, and we decide to stay home and take care of them, then we can be, uh, well, our spouses can contribute to a spousal IRA for us. Yes. So then it, it remains in our name, right? But uh, we're, we're getting paid for the caretaking that we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. in that regard. And so if a divorce happens, it's much easier to have your own IRA, right? Um, you know, you want to work with a planner to make sure that that's a good fit for the family, of course. But uh, that's just one of those things that we can do um, early in life to, to make sure that we're staying on track. And I'll just mention one more that I feel strongly about. And that is uh, that we need to evaluate jobs that we might be taking with the benefits acting like it's part of the paycheck. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, the difference between a, an employer matching and not matching a 401k, we a lot. need to calculate that out into the future mm -hmm. and make our decision, you know, at least partially based on that. What do they have for maternity leave? You know, is our job still going to be there when we get back? Um, but really putting some value on the evaluation of um, potential job offers is, is something else we can do in our younger years. I definitely agree with that. Um, and, you know, we're always about encouraging women to ask for more um, just to kind of get equal pay. Um, that's all we're asking for is just some equal pay. Um, <laughs> But it's also, you know, these are other things that are also good uh, negotiation items. You know, maybe it's working from home a couple of days a week because that helps you and your kids. You know, that's you, you can't always put a number to that, but those are things you have to weigh as well. And I love that you bring up that these benefits are equally as important. Um, that 401k match or if you're only matching 2 percent to 5 percent. I mean, 
that they're different. They are different and they add up because, you know, at first our 2% doesn't seem like much, but um, it always does add up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if the company doesn't have a 401k or a retirement plan, um, that's a great opportunity to connect into purse strings and have uh, one of us, you know, go and talk with them about it because uh, it's an employee's market right now. I think you would agree, you know, yeah. and, and uh, it, the employee is if they're playing the game and they're on top of it then they are going to choose the, the one that has the better benefits. And um, we can help companies to put those in place. It actually benefits the company and the employee and ultimately the world, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there are a lot of great steps we could do now. Um, there is, you know, a lot of ways to kind of protect yourself from falling in these holes, to make a plan, to work with a professional, um, and so if somebody met with you, what does that, what does that look like, that first kind of interaction? Well, um, the first interaction is really about getting to know one another and making sure that we're a good fit. And, uh, you know, there, there's never, a, I, I've never asked anyone to write me a check, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm not that kind of advisor. So I don't want people to feel like, you know, with, with every advisor, you have to write a check. We all work very differently. And the complete analysis that we do after getting to know our clients well is, uh, is complimentary. So we're looking at, we're looking at um, debt. We're looking at you know, spending per month, making sure that it has some meaning uh, with debt. We're looking at helping people to get out of debt as quickly and cleanly as possible. Believe me, being um, a debt counselor and a pre-bankruptcy counselor in the past and a personal finance counselor. Uh, I You've know, seen it all. I've seen it all. I've seen the good guys and the bad guys. And there are some quick, easy ways to get out of debt. And that, you know, it's, it's funny because not all financial firms talk about debt and some don't want to even touch it. But we know that it's one of the, the most worrisome parts of people's finance. And they feel like um, they feel like what the question reflects, which is, well, do I pay off debt or save money? That's yeah. a big question I've heard for 20 years now. And uh, there's a really easy solution to that. So in addition to, you know, debt and kind of monthly spending and giving that meaning, we're also talking about making sure we have an emergency savings account in place. Mm -hmm. That is the AKA stay out of debt account. Yeah, those are important. So in addition to that, of course, you know, a middle bucket, we call it, where we're saving for bigger ticket items um, or problems that might arise with work or time off of work. Uh, and then, of course, the, the ultimate and inevitable retirement savings, mm -hmm. which is really fun to design with women. I just love, love the creativity of women. We always have something fun to do or I love talking to everyone else and seeing what their uh hobbies are like ballroom dancing like go for it somebody else was talking to me that they love to uh clogging yeah and I was like there you go you know <laughs> whatever do your thing yeah and that's a way to find community too is to mm -hmm. really discover those things about ourselves that we you know might have might have tucked away for a while and community for women Maggie just like purse strings is for us is you know, it's critical. It's yeah. critical to have that community as we get older because we might lose our spouses, because we might not have a spouse, because, uh, you know, there are going to be things that we can't do on our own. And then there are just things that we want to do with our community, you know, right. travel or go dancing or clogging or whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah. Community is so important, especially I find for women. Um, we always need someone to lean on to get some advice from. Um, so that's why, you know, we also built this community. Um, that's these women who are all leaning on each other, which is um, always amazing and empowering, I think. Absolutely. Um, that is so part of security and peace of mind is having the, that community that has meaning too. Yeah, definitely. Um, before we sign off today, is there any last pieces of advice or wisdom you'd like to share with our group today? Oh, gosh, I think, um, you know, look for my book coming out in the spring, hopefully when we get through compliance, because there's so many, so many things in there that I've wanted to express to women for 20 years um, about money. 
Um, but I think, you know, the, the thing that I would focus in on most is um, mindful caregiving, you know, just making sure that, that we're also watching out for ourselves um, while we're, we're watching out for others and just understanding uh, the impact financially that that can have and being creative about how to, uh, you know, make up for it, so to speak, mm -hmm. not avoid that caregiving part of life by any stretch. <laughs> I'm not suggesting women go to work instead of have children and take care right. of them. <laughs> or, you know, uh, any, anything related to that. I'm just saying, let's, let's wake up and be aware um, of, you know, what our options are in terms mm -hmm. of making all ends of, of that caretaking role and expressing ourselves through work and otherwise um, let's, let's just be awake and aware and get some help in, in, in being that way. I love that. It's, it's very powerful. Um, so if anyone wants to reach out to Katie, more than welcome to ask her more questions, have a conversation, just kind of see where some of your goals lie. Um, so she, you can always, you can always reach Katie at katiepeg at priamerica.com. Um, she's also one of our Purse Strings Approved Professionals. So you could check her out on our website, purstrings.co. Um, and we appreciate everyone coming to this Money Monday. And we'll be back again here next week. So thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. It was really a joy. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. We'll talk to everyone soon. Bye. Bye.